the school bus for these children never has to cope with a rush hour traffic jam. In an area of the British Isles where people depend so much on the sea, a winter gale is more likely to make a child late for classes. On the Scillies, 30 miles into the Atlantic, on the southwest tip of Britain, the daily business of educating the island children has created a system almost unique in Britain. These children are on St. Mary's, the biggest island. They cannot enjoy the wide range of facilities available at schools on the mainland, but the rules are geared to their way of life. They get two summer holidays a year, one in August, another in October. That's because so many of their parents work in the tourist trade and then need a break with their families in autumn. Another oddity is that because of its size, all the children at school know each other. And in some cases, on other islands, there wouldn't be much trouble in that. Now, we're going down to Preglis later on. And we're going to continue with our project on Preglis Quay. And we're going to measure the lifeboat slip as far as we can. The entire class is present. In fact, the entire school on the island of St Agnes, the smallest in the Scillies group. And needless to say, Marigold Bush is the only teacher and in almost total charge of the children's education. Not that she isn't familiar with the classroom. She sat here as a kid herself and her father, her grandfather and many other generations of her family. St Agnes, which is less than one square mile in size, has a population of about 50 people who live in tiny cottages surrounded by the sea. It's an island of rocky inlets and creamy beaches with winding lanes where a car is less important than a boat. The people earn their living either from the land or fishing and recently from tourism. When these children grow up, it will be their choice of livelihood too if they decide to stay on St Agnes. It's a very attractive place, isn't it? Mm. It's got some lovely stripes on here. Big, isn't it? It looks big from that distance. It looks big, as well. It really is. <laughs> Go get him some green leaves. Can you see his horns? Oh, yeah. I can see them. Because there are only six of them aged between five and nine, they simply have to get on with each other. And at times, the class has been even smaller. A few years ago, the entire school had only two pupils. Marigold has had to create her own little world in here. She has to teach about a life outside which St Agnes children have never experienced until they visit the mainland. What does a train look like? Or a bus? What's it like on a subway? On an elevator? In a supermarket? Or in a car on the motorway? Their world is the natural environment of a small island and there is no longing for the things we take for granted in the rest of Britain. At the age of 11, they experience the most dramatic change in their lives. They have to leave their tiny classrooms and indeed their homes to continue their education. There is only one secondary school on the Scillies the comprehensive at St Mary's, and the children from the smaller islands must come here. They have to board out at a hostel, separated from their families, not through choice, which the rich tend to do on the mainland, but out of basic necessity. Yet strangely, for all their lack of experiencing city life, island children have as high an educational standard as anywhere else. They experience daily the kind of adventures a city child can only enjoy once a year on holiday. The children of Marigold's tiny school have the beauty of the islands to explore. This is a nature class, and look what lies only a few hundred yards from the school. The seashore teems with life. There's an adventure in every pool, under every rock, and everywhere the sea which they'll learn to love and respect. Give me your welk, if you like. <coughs> there we are. Oh, that's one we just turned over. Try the one next to it, then. 
I think it's a tiny worm. Oh, yes, a tiny little worm. Look, can you see that titchy little worm there? Even a lesson in metrication, in measuring or adding up, can use the things which lie around them. What differences, Marigold, do you see in, in the kids that you teach here, your entire class surrounding you, uh, with uh, other kids on the mainland? Well, they're very friendly children here, and there's absolutely no discipline problems at all. Really? None at all, no. We're... It's great fun teaching here. You Why? discover with the children as you go along, and... Uh, they're all so eager to learn. They enjoy coming to school. What do they miss, do you think? I think the opportunities to visit uh, zoos and uh, different sorts of museums. We do have a museum on St Mary's, which is very good for local uh, things, but um, visiting railways, uh, bus stations. There's, there's lots of work that we do. It would be nice to follow up and go to these various places that you can't. On St Agnes, obviously. What about this island itself, James? What, what do you like about living here? I, I, like, I like fishing mainly. Do you? Fishing, fishing and going out, mainly going out to the downs. To the downs? Yeah, to the downs and doing all sorts of things out there. Would you like to live in a city? No, hate it. You wouldn't like to live in a city? No. Why? It. Well, no. The freedom. No. No. Another freedom. The freedom to do what? Do you think? Freedom to, well, to, to go out, to go out a lot mainly. Yeah. To go out by myself. Sadly, childhood dreams fade as the youngsters from the islands grow up. Only an average of three out of thirty who leave school at sixteen remain on the Sillies. They go to the mainland for work. It's only in later life, in retirement perhaps, that people return to the place where they grew up. They'll always remember, like these children will, how the simple pleasures of this life can be the most rewarding. They'll remember the beauty of their island and their friends in the tiny school. That happened to Marigold Bush. For when she went away to train as a teacher, her only dream was to return to St Agnes. And incidentally, she's not only the school teacher either, but now she's the wife of the island's only publican. And when she has children, she'll expect them to sit in the same classroom as she did and her ancestors before her, on an island where so little changes and nobody hopes it ever will.